thank you, thank you. Uh, I definitely appreciate being able to uh, do this podcast. Y'all know I love cigars, like cigars is my life. Um, I'm not just an ambassador for Fat Ash. I am a true lover of the leaf. And not only do I love the experience and the feeling I get when I smoke a great cigar, I love learning about the history of cigars, how they're made. Why do I taste this flavor and another flavor and a different note? And why does it taste different when I pair it with certain uh, beverages? And so I like to smoke and learn. And that's what I'm trying to show especially the Sisters of the Leaf, about learning what you're smoking, um, to be an educated smoker and understand the product that you purchase and spend your hard-earned money on. And we're gonna start with the basics. So this might be new to some people and it might be old news to others. Either way, um, we should always, you know, seek knowledge and refresh our brains because sometimes we forget we get stuck in our habits and our rituals and we get the basics mm -hmm. so we're going to go back to basics and before we start right now tonight my cigar of choice is the crux bull and bear um i just lit it and um it's um one of my favorites i would say I've had it all pretty a while, so now we're ready to smoke it. And of course, I got my fat ash cup, and y'all know what I say. Don't mess what's in that cup. That's mm. right, you know it, you know it. So I got my cup, I got my stick, we ready to rock and roll. So I brought some cigars because we're gonna start with the four parts of a cigar. So most people, they just get a cigar, they uh, tear off the wrapper, cut it how they want it. You know, you have different uh, cut preferences. You have your punch, you have your straight cut, you have your crown cut, which is a V-cut, cut twice to create a nice little pointed crown. However you want to do it, that's fine. It's up to you. It really is no preference. So I have some unlit cigars and I wanted to explain the four parts of the cigar. So this right here is a nice Habano from Southern Kings. If you were in uh, the Fat Ash group yesterday, you would have seen that I smoked the Southern uh, Kings uh, Maduro last night. And that was a good hour and a half smoke. When I tell you that was an amazing smoke, definitely look up Southern Kings um, cigars, artists, A-R-T-I-S Adams, He's um, in the group, he's black owned business. So we're gonna support that. But the four parts of the cigar is the cap. Now see, it's completely enclosed right there. So that is what we call the cap. Now, when you cut it, regardless of what type of cutter you use, you never wanna cut too deep because if you cut too deep and too far, you will unravel the wrapper and we're gonna get into that. But in the meantime, you have your cap. You only wanna cut the cap because this is just a piece of tobacco at the top that maintains the integrity of the cigar and it allows the flavor to come in and allows you to cut it the way you want. And so then you have the head. Now the head is the part that is underneath the cap. Just like you have your hat, you may have a scully on or something and it's just fits over your dome and then you have the head. And of course, this is the body. This is what you look at when you're trying to decide what kind of cigar you want. If you're like me, I'm a very visual person. Um, I like to look at the entire cigar. I look at the banding. I'm looking for uniformity. I don't wanna see it crooked. Um, I like a very rugged age looking cigar. And this is definitely this. This is a true Habano and it has beautiful veining, which is the natural lining of the leaf. And then you have your foot and that's this. This is the part that you toast and this is where you light it at a preferably a 45 degree angle to start smoking. So these are your four parts of a cigar. 
And each one of these parts make up your experience, that feeling you get, that taste you get when you do a cold draw, all of that comes from these four components. Without knowing this, it's going to be hard to show someone what they need to do when they start smoking cigars. So now that we got that out of the way, always remember that you wanna light your cigar evenly. You don't want to put the flame too close to the cigar because you will actually burn it. And when you do a cold draw, that first draw in to light it, it will taste very burnt and it'll sometimes it'll be acidic and you don't want that taste. You want to get the natural flavors of all of the long leaf uh, tobacco that is in your cigar. So how you light it and get started will affect your entire rest of it. I mean, your entire experience with that particular cigar. So you definitely have to keep that in mind, okay? Right. And also for the record, and this might be controversial or whatever, but please use a torch when you're lighting your cigar. I know we've all been in situations where we're traveling and we're getting on flights and we can't bring our torch, so you might use a big lighter, God forbid. That should only be used in extreme circumstances when you have nothing else. But even a match would be better than using a traditional cigarette lighter. And there's many reasons for that. Um, the main reason is when you have butane, it is very pure. It is designed for the torch. So when you toast your cigar, you want to only taste the flavors that the creator of the cigar wants you to taste. And when you don't use a torch and you use a regular lighter, sometimes you might have the additives that they put in those lighters affect your cigar. So of course we've been in circumstances where that's all we had, we didn't even have a match, but when you know better, you do better. So please, especially if you have a really good high quality cigar, get a torch. Okay, everyone straight? Okay, so yes, any questions? No, nope. you're doing good, sis. Okay. All right. Because I don't want to go too fast and give too much information. They're like, wait, 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 what? What are you saying? What are you saying? Okay. All right. So cool. So we went over the four parts of the cigar. So then you may have someone ask you, okay, well, what do I do after that? I tell a newbie that's into cigars, make sure you get your mind right. A cigar is designed to take your time. You pace yourself. It is not a cigarette where you only have five minutes to enjoy it before you get down to the butt. You also have to realize that a cigar is considered a luxury item. That's why you don't find it in 7-Eleven and Walgreens and Dollar Tree. A cigar is considered a luxury item because it is. Why is it? This is all handmade, hecho a mano, made by hand. There are hundreds and thousands of craftsmen that create this masterpiece that you light up to smoke. When you sit on your patio, sit on your porch, in your car, wherever your good space is, this is the time that you mellow out and you get in your thoughts and you can really reflect. So take your time. There's no rush with a cigar. That's why they come in different sizes. When you're in a hurry, you have the little cigars. If you only had 10, 15 minutes, they have cigarillos. So you have options. So never ruin a wonderful cigar if you don't have the time to savor it and enjoy it. So you get in the mood, you grab your drink or you put your music on in the background, you get in your favorite chair. You know, you get your mind ready because Smoking a cigar is an experience. It's not just something you just want to post pictures or look at. You pace yourself, you get into the moment, you try to figure out what the flavors of the cigar have, what the flavors of the cigar has. And that's the time when you get in your thoughts. You know, you might 
want to journal at that time, you know, maybe just want to really think about something, but your cigar moment, moments should be an experience. No distractions, you just relax and enjoy it. That's why it's called the cigar lifestyle because it is a lifestyle. You know, just, just chill out. You know, you always have your options about what you want to do with it. You know, as far as, you know, your cut, your torch, your light, you know, the cigar industry gives you lots of choices and that is to enhance your experience. And so, you know, enjoy it, sit back, have fun. Okay. So, and of course, I'm not sure if people know, but when you go to the lounge or even if you're at home and you have your ashtray and you have your cigar, when you're finished with a cigar, there's one thing you should never ever do. And that is stomp it out. You never do that. Because when you do that, when that happens, it will give off a very acrid smell. It's the worst smell ever. It's not like burnt food. I really can't describe it, but it's a, a smell that you won't soon forget. So what you do, we just lay it in the ashtray, it will let you burn out and let it go. All right, we good? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and what people don't realize is when I was talking about it being a luxury item, the tobacco season is usually about 18 weeks. And the most popular places that you get your tobacco from is usually from certain regions. So Dominican Republic. Always buy big on tech things. Cryptocurrency, blockchain, only So as far as what Thank your you. cigar is made of, this particular car is from Esteli, Nicaragua. And I personally love Nicaraguan cigars. I don't know what it is in the soil, but their cigars are just fantastic. So your uh, tobacco will uh, most likely come from Nicaragua, Honduras, Dominican Republic, Mexico, and even the United States. That's why we have Connecticut cigars. Those have United States based tobacco, and I believe there's a Philadelphia leaf as well. So those are the main regions of the world where your tobacco leaf will come from. Um, the soil there creates the best tobacco leaves. And so that's why you have in Cigar Aficionado and all those other rating systems, why certain cigars that contain these leaves and these fillers and wrappers and binders and so on and so forth will come from those countries. They are proven to be the best. And so if it's not broke, don't fix it. And that's just what it is, right? So with that, you also have to realize that everyone is going to have a preference with their cigars. There are some people that only like a certain brand or a certain type of cigar, a certain size, which is the gauge, um, and that's fine. However, I like to switch things up. I've tried hundreds, and believe me when I tell you, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cigars of all types, all um, you know, all wrappers and binders, whether it's a uh, Cameroon, Indonesian. I've even had Indonesian uh, wrappers. I forgot to also tell you that you can have your tobacco and your cigar come from Indonesia or Cameroon, two other places that create magnificent cigars. So there are certain places in the world where the soil is better and they just create better products. And that's why we have great cigars and you get the flavor that you get. And it's a great experience each time you smoke. So that being said, um, you're always gonna have a preference about what you like. I'm the type of person, I like to switch it up. Um, the guy that got me into cigars, Gary Dunlap, his best advice to me was always try everything. Don't 
have your palette trained to one particular brand, one particular gauge or wrapper. He said, smoke everything. And eventually your palette will calibrate and you'll find out over time what you like. So in the beginning, when I started smoking, I would prefer Connecticut's. I would buy Maduro's and I would buy, you know, all types of cigars, of course, but I like Connecticut's. I like the flavor of it then. Now, two years down the line, I'm feeling like I like more Habanos and Maduro's. I get more flavor. I experiment with, um, with different cuts because I've learned certain cigars, the cut gives me a better drawer. I can really taste everything of the cigar from the first third, the second third, which is usually the middle where the band is. You know, the second third is usually about here. And then the final third is when you get towards the very end. So it's split up in thirds. And the cigars are meant to change. That's why you have the flavor wheel. So sometimes you may taste leather, you may taste grass, you might even taste earth, chocolate, fruit, raisins, berries. I mean, the options are endless. And so after a while, after you start smoking, you'll get into a routine. And I think we all have our routine. You know, we have our cutter, we have our lighter, we may have our beverage of choice. We have everything set up because we have a routine, which is always good. But try everything. Um, there are cigars that I've tried, didn't like the first time, and that's okay. It may not work the first time. I like to wait maybe a month, sometimes more, and I'll go back to the cigar and see if in that course of time that I gave it a break, will my palate like it? Sometimes it does, sometimes it don't. You know, I've had a cigar I tried three times over the course of a month um, or more, and still didn't like it. So that's an X on my list forever, like never again. So, um, you know, there is no- And what cigar right. would that be? Um, I'm not going to say. Oh, okay. <laughs> However, <laughs> you know, it, um, a lot of people like it. <laughs> but, um, you know, I did a thorough review in Fat Ash about my experience with this particular brand. And, um, you know, and I agree with made. you. Yes. Right. And so it was very well made. It was beautiful to the eye. You know, I mean, the presentation was very nice. However, Toya's palate did not like it. Mm -hmm. And each experience that I had was not the best experience. And, you know, I did switch up each time because I wanted to see if, you know, what I was drinking or different things that will affect how it tastes. I mean, you'd be surprised how you cut a cigar affects how it tastes. How Absolutely. you toast your cigar can affect how it tastes, whether you toast it or don't toast it. It's all about a science, a tried and true formula. So I actually took notes on during that course of time when I had this particular brand, because I wanted to see what would cause my palate to change and if I would like it. And my palate was like, no, okay. you don't like this. So that's a no-go. So it's a no-go, you know? Mm -hmm. I get it. <laughs> it is what it is. Absolutely. So, you know, um, that's, you know, it's all a matter of your preference. All I know is I, I hear it all the time that people say, well, I tried a cigar for the first time and I didn't like it. And in my head, I'm automatically saying to myself, okay, well, there could be many reasons why you didn't like it. You know, it could uh -huh. not have been cut right. It probably wasn't lit right. The person probably didn't heat it up right. I mean, mm. they probably use an inferior torch. For it. it could be a number of reasons. You know, but I think that if you start your cigar off the right way, no matter how you decide to smoke it or what torch you use or what cut you use, if you use the basics and follow that formula, each experience with the cigar will be good. Cut it correctly, only the cap, not the head. You don't want to cut it too deep. You want to use a high quality cutter. It has to be extra sharp not dull because if you use a dull guillotine cutter, 
when you cut it, it will cut too deep and it will unravel the wrapper. And therefore you have a really good expensive cigar. And because you have a dull guillotine straight cutter, you basically ruined the cigar because once you start putting it to your mouth and licking it um, over the course of smoking the cigar, it's going to start to unravel. And once the top unravels, it's really hard to repair it. I mean, it's pretty much downhill from there. I mean, you could try to salvage it, but it's going to be kind of hard because everything has an order and it's designed to do certain things. Everything works hand in hand. The cigars and the tools that you have work hand in hand. So try to invest in the best tools that you can afford. It's not about the most expensive torch or I paid a hundred dollars. It's this name brand or that name brand. Buy the best that you can afford. And that's all that matters. When you buy the best in your budget, then you know you're getting a quality tool and a quality tool paired up with a premium cigar will give you a great experience. I mean, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. So that's that. <laughs> Any questions? Because I got notes. I wanted to make sure I covered everything. That was, that was good stuff, T. That was good. <laughs> um, let me see. I have a question. Very, very informative. Sure. What do you mean when you're saying toasting the cigar? I don't know if I missed that part. Right. Okay. Lighten it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So toasting it is warming it up. Um, when you get your cigar, um, and I purposely didn't really uh, smoke this too much because I wanted to demonstrate the toasting. So of course this has already been lit, but let's just pretend that you know, this cigar looks like this. Okay, so this is just the end of, this is the foot of the cigar. So you take your lighter at a 45 degree angle and you let the heat from the cigar, I mean, from the lighter, I'm sorry, lightly toast the cigar. So you toast it and I usually blow on it to maintain the temperature. You kiss the cigar, that's it. Then you take your first cold drawer. And you light it. So you look at it. You should have an even, um, an evenly heated foot. And now you take your first puff, and that's your cold drawer. So you just draw in. You don't inhale, and then you blow that out. Now you're getting the temperature of the cigar together. Now you're starting the cigar experience. So that's what toasting or heating up your cigar is. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Oh, and also um, sometimes even when you, when you light your cigar initially, um, you may not get it completely lit. And there's nothing wrong with just taking it and just giving it a quick zap in the areas that you see that you miss and just kiss it, which is a quick blow. And that'll cool it down and get it to be an even temperature. So you always smoke and rotate. Each smoke that you take in, you turn it. Because at the end of the day, at the end of, I'm sorry, not the end of the day. At the end of your cigar, your cap, what we call the ash, should be even. That's how you know you're smoking your cigar correctly. So you should have an even cap. It shouldn't be wavy. You know, one, the wrapper is all the way up here, and then the other side, your ash is all the way like this. Um, no, it should be an even ash. Good question, Rita. Um, Any other question? Okay. Good information, so you, you really you cleared <laughs> up a lot of stuff right there with that. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of good information. I have a question. Sure. Is it normal to um, to light your cigar like several times while you're smoking? Actually, I was just going to get into that. Good question. Um, in a perfect world, with a really good, well-made, constructed cigar, you shouldn't have to relight it. I would say more than once during the smoking time. There's always variables to that. 
Because of course, if you sit a cigar down, let's just say for 20 minutes, mm -hmm. of course the cigar is going to cool down and blow out. But if you just have it sitting, let's just say a couple minutes, you go to the sink, wash your hands, it should still remain lit. Mm -hmm. um, that actually segs into my next topic because some people say, especially in the group, they say, what is the big deal about the big ash? Why is everyone making a big deal about getting a good cap? And we have our contests in the group. Some people have like the ash the size of the cigar. You know, so I know there's a lot of people that say, well, what's the big deal with that? Like, I'm not going to sit in one place for an hour and hold my cigar up and smoke up to the heavens just to get an ash. You don't have to do that. Um, but there is a reason for the ash. It's not just for a contest. It's not just because it looks attractive because it is fascinating. I mean, even mm -hmm. I have to admit when I see a fat ash, I'm like, wow, how did you do that? Like, that is amazing. But when you keep a steady, solid ash, it maintains the temperature of the cigar. Because if you notice, sometimes if you have a cigar and let's just say you smoke it to the band, the band, because it's paper with the exception of the leaf, because the leaf, the leaf by Oscar cigars, you can literally smoke the whole thing, including the band. So mm -hmm. we're excluding that. All cigars will have a band because that is their branding. Their branding is this band. It is identifiable to that particular brand. You may not know the name of a cigar, but you can look at the band and say, oh yeah, I had that cigar before. You may not even remember what it is or what house it came from, whether it's Fernandez or Toa Fuente, but you say, oh yeah, I remember this band. So they have marketing companies that do a lot of research on their bands, you know, to identify who they are. So sometimes because this is paper, that will cause the temperature of the cigar to cool down. You can smoke through it. You know, if you've got a good ash going or you just don't want to take it off, you can smoke through it. But chances are it will cool the temperature down. And when you try to smoke through the entire band, it might cool off. So there are cases where you have to touch up the cigar at some point. My advice is this. Let's just say you have a cigar that you didn't finish this size. So, you know, you, you're about to go to bed in about 45 minutes. So you get up to this part of the cigar. Okay. You don't want to throw it out. You're not going to discard it. So you let it cool off. Okay. So the next day you say, okay, I want to finish this crux that I started. You have to clean out the bottom of the foot that you ended the cigar in. The reason why you have to do that is once it cools down, it becomes carbon. And that is not something you want to relight. Mm -hmm. It will give you the worst taste, regardless of how expensive the cigar is, regardless how much you paid for it or whatever. That carbon is not what you want to taste when you light it. So now Toya, can you um what what I do? Just a question. Maybe I've been doing it wrong. But when I get to the point where I have to do something, I'll get mm -hmm. my cutter and I'll cut off. Mm -hmm. But like above I mean. above where the heat was, mm -hmm. I'll just cut it off and discard mm -hmm. it and then come back to the rest of the cigar later. Where it yeah. looks right. more like the natural uh right. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. right. 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 And, and I do that also if I find for some reason it's burning unevenly. Sometimes regardless of how you, uh, you know, toast the foot, because these are handmade, you know, you may have a mishap with a cigar. You know, you may have a good cigar that it'll start unraveling or, you know, it's, um, it's tunneling. It's, it's, you know, it'll, you know, it'll just not burn right. So that's where your straight cutter comes into play. Like Nikki said, you can cut it right at the ash so that you don't have to lose the majority of your cigar. So you can do that as well. And that's why I always recommend that everyone keep a sharp straight cutter. That will be your saving grace, especially if for whatever reason, it's not getting an even cap. 
You could just cut it. Even if you have to clean it out, long as it's a gray ash and it's not dark, because when it cools down, it will be dark. It'll look like, um, you know, like in the, like charcoal. So that's not what you want to inhale or, you know, breathe in when you smoke. That's not what you want to do. So you always use the end of the, of the uh, sharp, uh, the straight cutter. I use that end to tunnel it out, clean it out, make it straight, cut it light it up. You don't have to toast it at that point because it's already been lit. So you don't have to go through the toasting process when you relight it. You just have to give it an even light. And that's it. And you just keep smoking. Thank you. That's very Good helpful. Question, Nick. Good question. Yeah. Any more questions? I have another question. Sure. Um, go ahead. With regard to, uh, I guess, flavor profile, is there a particular technique that you use as far as um, um, puffing or whatever to get to a particular flavor? I mean, some sometimes they're not as obvious to me as they would be to someone else. So how do I develop my palate? The best way to develop your palate is to smoke a large variety of cigars. Okay. Try your sweets. Try your mild, or you know, it could be a medium full bodied. You can have a mild that's medium bodied. Try different cigars and different wrappers because the darker the wrapper, like for example, a uh, Maduro, it will mm -hmm. give you a fuller flavor. Right. And each company and each cigar, they've already manufactured and and with the seeds about what the flavor profile will be and also in the drying process affects how the tobacco will taste. So to get the flavor profile, you have to smoke different cigars and sometimes you have to take notes. When you're trying to get a profile to figure out what flavor you're tasting, my suggestion is to sip water. Now, regardless of what I drink, sometimes I may uh, you know, drink alcohol with uh, my cigars, but I always have water, always. Water does wonders because you may come across a cigar that really makes your mouth dry. I mean, dry, like cotton mouth for real. And it's not the best experience. So if you have water, it's not flavored. It will reset your palate, as I like to say. It'll give you a reset and it'll allow you to go back to the flavor of the cigar to figure out what you're smoking. And remember that each part of cigar, your flavor profile will change. So in the beginning, you may uh, taste somewhat like a, for example, like grassy, very earthy, um, you know, maybe even nuts, leather, even though most people don't know what leather tastes like, right. but your five right. senses work together, but your five senses yeah. work together, your tongue and your ears, your nose, they all work together. And so even though you've never tasted leather, but when you inhale, you'll be like, oh yeah, this does taste like leather. I taste maybe chocolate or cocoa or maybe vanilla or caramel. Over time, your palate will be fine-tuned. But that comes with experience and that comes with smoking a wide variety. Oh like never limit yourself to a particular wrapper, to a particular brand, smoke everything and always have water. And it doesn't happen overnight. I mean, as many cigars as I've smoked, I can't tell you all the components of the flavor wheel. I really can't. Mm -hmm. And there are hundreds. It's literally a science. There's a whole flavor wheel. I couldn't tell you, but I know things that I'm used to eating and things that I have smelled. And so my smell, which is, you know, one of your five senses correlates with what you're smoking. And you'd be like, oh yeah, I definitely taste a little cherry or some berries or whatever. It's, you know, you don't have to be detailed with it or knock yourself out trying to figure it out, you know, but you will notice that over time as you keep smoking, each part of the cigar will have a different flavor. The beginning, the middle, and the end, it will taste differently. 
Yeah, that part I have noticed. I yeah. have noticed with cert certain ones, like once you get to that that last third uh, near the cap, it, it does change. It gets stronger. Yeah. Right. It, so gets it, it, a, a, it takes to a nice zone if you get the yes. right one. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. That's, what, that's where I'm at right now. Right. <laughs> and, and, I, and I tell people, you know, I, I love cigars because there are certain cigars that I've had where I've literally like felt high. I mean, mm -hmm. honestly, it will take you in a zone like, whoa, you got to sit back and be like, you did that? Like, whoa, you know, it will take you there. And that's part of the experience of cigars. That's why we don't rush when we light a cigar. You know, you may be able to, you know, have a, a quick cigar at work, but you're thinking about when I get home, I'm going to do my ritual. I'm going to take my shower. I'm going to wrap my hair up, put my nice comfy pajamas on. I'm going to go out in the patio. You, you're already thinking about which cigar mm -hmm. you're going to get, you know, because you're looking forward to that experience. And that's what it is. That's what I try to tell people. The difference between cigarettes and cigars is cigarettes is a quick thrill. These mm -hmm. people will stand in minus 10 degree weather just for five oh, minutes it. of a cigar, of a cigarette. <laughs> I mean, they will tell you, oh no, I can't do that. I can't function. I gotta have a cigarette. I gotta have a cigarette. Oh no, I can't. You know, they can't function. They have to take mm -hmm. cigarette breaks all day. Right. But a cigar smoker, we look forward to being in the moment. The variety that we have. Mm -hmm. you know, going into your humidor or your, you know, whatever you store your cigars in and you already know, but like, oh yeah, I'm going to have that Fuente or I'm going to have that Opus X. Yeah, I cannot wait. I'm going to have me a drink, you know, and it's your wind down time. Right. It's your time to decompress. You get, you know, I know for me from personal experience, when I smoke a cigar, I like to go out on my patio and mm -hmm. I, I just get very introspective. You know, all of a sudden I'm like, okay, well, why is the sky blue? Why is the, this? you know, I get very into my feelings. I get very relaxed. It's just my moment. No matter what kind of day I have, I know that my time with a cigar will be the best time because I'm never disappointed. It's a luxury item and that's why. Right. Yeah, it puts and me in a meditative state. Yeah. Yes, savor it. Take your time. Mm -hmm. You know, buy different sizes so you can figure out how much time you may need with a cigar. Of course, the longer the cigar, the longer smoke time you have in most cases. Of course, you have a Churchill or a Lancero. You know, you're looking at probably an hour. You know, but even if you get um, if you get a short cigar, maybe thirty minutes. Right. You know, cigarillo, fifteen minutes. Right. So you buy a variety, you buy a variety of sizes and everything so that you can take the time necessary to enjoy it. It's not designed to just be quick. You you know, you sit back, you relax, you know, just like you're in a lounge, you you know, you chat with your friends or other people in the lounge, you puff, you sip. It's a moment of clarity, as I call it. That that's what's well, smart. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. But that's a good question. You know, it, it doesn't happen overnight, sis. You okay. know, it, everything is a process. You know, don't, you know, beat yourself up if you can't identify, you know, the six components of this cigar and, you know, you don't know what, what tobacco these is used. You know, that's not necessary. All you need to know is that, hey, I have a cigar. I like how it tastes. I be, I'm getting a good feeling. And even if you don't like it, you know, don't beat yourself over that either. If it's something after just, you know, the first quarter and you're like, you know what? I really don't like this cigar. That's okay. You put it down, let it burn out, light up another one. But you know, that's true because I smoke smoke and I can't tell you what I be tasting. <laughs> <laughs> I swear. If it if I if I like it, I like it. I ain't trying to say, oh, it tastes like grass, it tastes like leather, it tastes like anything. It tastes good to me at this moment. Right. Period. I got and real life shit to worry about. I'm not worried about what the cigar tasting like right now. I'm sorry. Right. 
but, but I thank you for, for teaching me that, you know, I know that it's there, you know what I'm saying? But as far as me sitting back, be like, hmm, do I taste grass? <laughs> do I taste leather? No, I don't taste none of that shit. I just be smoking. <laughs> hey, I, and I, there's like nothing wrong with out. that. Oh, I wait. wanted to add, if I, if I may, mm -hmm. in regards to taking your time with the cigar and um, the flavor profile, being able to enjoy it, in regards to how fast you puff your cigar, if you puff it too fast, you can ruin the tobacco. You will burn it too fast and it will mm -hmm. make it taste harsh. You will not taste the flavor of the tobacco that you actually right. intended to taste. So it's important exactly. that you're not puffing it like a cigar or not rushing it. That goes back to what Toya was saying in regards to not um, rushing your smoke session. A lot of the times I'm like Toya, I like to sit in my little diva den and enjoy my, take my time and enjoy my cigar because when I'm in the cigar lounge with my cigar group or whoever, I find that I'm running my mouth and I'm sipping, I'm smoking and I'm not paying attention to my cigar like I normally would at mm -hmm. home. But I just wanted to add that if you puff it too fast, you definitely will burn the tobacco and it will taste much different and right. not as enjoyable. Right, know. right. And that that's too um, that that is very true, and that that's another thing that makes um, cigars different from cigarettes, because cigarettes have additives in their products, and everything tastes the same. Each cigarette tastes exactly the same. I mean, there's no flavor profile. There's no different. It just tastes the same. And, you know, you're always going to have a person say, oh, well, you know, I don't know what's the difference. Well, you know, what's the big deal? Smoking is smoking. Cigars, cigarettes, it's the same thing. No. I said, no. Let me, I said, no, let me tell you the difference. You are not going to be able to take a tour of Newport cigarettes and see how they <laughs> create their cigarettes from start to finish. Mm -hmm. I guarantee that that is top secret and only the workers that work at whoever owns Newport company or whatever barn, you know, all them cigarette companies is not going to allow you to come in there and see how they make the cigarettes. Um, the, all you see is big machines because it's made by machines. It's not made by hand. And you'll see millions of cigarettes in a pallet going down, uh, you know, a conveyor belt into a box. Um, that's not a luxury experience. And that's what you're smoking and you're spending how much it is to cost a box for that. And yeah, of course, they'll say, well, you know, look how much I'm getting uh, for $8 and you spend $8, $12, $14 for a cigar. I was like, yeah, you know why? Because this is hecho a mano. This is made by hand. This is made from the earth. Everything except the binder is all made from pure tobacco. Um, it has been masterfully crafted. I can take my time with it. Um, I can really reflect. I have my array of tools that also enhance the experience and I can take my time. And cigars are sexy. I don't wanna smoke a cigarette and then five minutes is over. I mean, do you want to spend that much money and then five minutes is over? I don't know about you, but um, no, I prefer quality over quantity. And that's the difference. We can go get on a plane. Well, if COVID didn't exist, hypothetically, um, we can go arrange a tour and go to Esteli, Nicaragua and tour mm -hmm. the farms where the beginning of your cigar began you know, was created. We can see the fields where the tobacco leaves are being grown. We can go into the tanning room where the tobacco leaves are being dried out. And we can see that. And then you go to another section and you have a whole bunch of people, tabacaleros, that are actually making the cigar. And they make it and they say, here, you take your cutter and you light it, okay? can't do that as, at a cigarette factory, babe. No, that's not happening. So that's what separates real from them. 
That that's a difference. period. Period. <laughs> period. Period. <laughs> With the T. With the T, right. <laughs> that, that, that's the difference. And usually yes. when I break it down like that, they be like, oh, okay. I'm like, yeah, so please don't put cigars and cigarettes in the same category. We are not the yeah, same. Not the same. Mm-hmm. We are not, not the all. same. Um, we're between our accoutrements, as I say, you know, our cutters, our lighters, we have different types of cutters. We have punch, we have straight cutters. You know, we have different type of torches. We have different name brands of torches, our boxes, our Bavita packs. Um, I mean, the list could it's go a on It's a lifestyle. Yeah. We are serious about our cigars, even when we yeah. travel. We don't want to yes. bring our expensive, you know, Bugatti lighter because you know TSA gonna be hating and, and take it. Yes, sir. So we would get yes, sir. You know, so you know how we pack our cigars in our humidors and maintaining the temperature and the humidity. This is a serious matter. People that smoke cigarettes don't understand that. It is truly a luxury lifestyle, and not you know, and I, I like educating people on that because a lot of individuals they just know the cigars that maybe their grandfather smoke and all they know is that oh my god it smells so bad i don't want to smoke cigar because it smells horrible i said cigars have evolved mm-hmm. you have sweet cigars and you have very rich cigars and everything in between whatever your flavor profile is whatever your it. preference is it's out there Cherry, blueberry, banana, whiskey infused, bourbon infused. I mean, everything yep. under the sun is there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you mentioned, um, I just want to kind of skim, skip back a little bit. You mentioned sure. humidity and temperature. And one of her questions um, was, do you normally have to relight your cigar? You know, so I wanted to... Um, just mentioned that sometimes if your cigars are not stored properly, true um, temperature and humidity, it will yes. affect the cigar. The cigar mm-hmm. will constantly go out because it wasn't stored properly, and that will cause right. you to have to keep lighting that cigar. So the humidity and temperature plays a part. Um, mm-hmm. They they play a part together. So it's important to have both numbers um, where they need to be. Okay. Right. Thank you for telling me that, sis. Um, I forgot to mention that um, there are, you know, so many factors that come into play when someone say, I don't like a cigar or it's not lighting correctly. Um, we, and we get that question a lot in the group. You know, why is it making a funny shape? Why is it tunneling? Why is it splitting up? You know, once again, this is why this is a luxury lifestyle. You know, all of us that have human doors, you know, we watch our humidors, temperature and humidity levels religiously, like watching a baby with a fever. Like you are watching that gauge. Sometimes like mine, mine has a built-in hygrometer um, and it's been accurate, but I also bought a digital because I need to be absolutely sure that my babies are in the right temperature because mm-hmm. the cigars that you purchase, if you have humidor, that is an investment. I mean, right. if you actually, for, for those real. of us that have 250 plus capacity humidors, if you calculate the average price for one cigar times what you have, that is an investment. In most cases, that could be, you know, three, four months mortgage for most people that we have in our humidors. So it is a serious mm-hmm. matter about the temperature and how they're stored. And also, and if you have a uh, if you have a humidor that stores, let's say, I ain't gonna say no two fifty nine, golly, but like a regular hum- humidor would store probably what twenty five to fifty cigars. Mm-hmm. And the really really important thing is to keep that humidor full, not right. having three and four mm-hmm. cigars in there because it's gonna mess up the humidity of those cigars. Mm -hmm. Because it's just like a refrigerator. If your refrigerator has a couple of things in it and it's not full, everything's going to be stored at a different different temperature. So you have to treat your humidor the same way. If it is a capacity of 25, you need to really keep it full. And I mean, everybody wants a big old humidor, but if you cannot fill that humidor and keep it full, it's a bad Mm -hmm. situation. You're just messing up your cigars. That, that is very true because mine is pretty much full. 
but I also rotate my cigars. You know, it whenever I get um, a mail call, it gives me the opportunity to go into the humidor and look at the ones that's there, check them out, make sure that they're not soft. Even though I'm looking at the temperature, I'm looking at the gauge and it says everything is okay. You just want to be able to touch the cigars and make sure that they still are firm in texture, that you don't mm -hmm. have any plume on it, which is like mold oh, on it, because it may have come from, you know, wherever you purchase it from, it may not be an error on your part. It mm -hmm. might be how you got it from the lounge or, you know, the store or whatnot. There's a lot of different reasons. And so, yeah, it's very important to check that out. I have a question. So for those of us who <laughs> don't have a high count of cigars, like if I have like a, a 25 count uh, mm -hmm. box or a 20 count box, would you recommend anything other than the packs to put in there? Should I also have a like a, a smaller digital reader or what would you suggest? Well, I can only speak on having a large capacity humidor, but I have seen those that have extra humidors, like they have like the Tupperware that they've converted into um, a humidor and they do have thermometers and gauges that mm -hmm. creates the perfect um, percentage of humidity, which is usually, I think it's recommended like 68%, you know, but like 65, 68, you don't want to mm -hmm. go any lower than that and any higher than that. Of course, where you live, where your humidor, where you're going to store it has a lot to do with that fluctuation. So mm -hmm. like, um, I believe- like Make sure you use the still yeah. water too. Yeah. Right. Never don't be use using that. Don't water. use that same water. Uh -uh. <laughs> right. Don't use tap water because no, every, it will all, mold. All water is not equal. You mm -hmm. never it ever ever want to use tap water. Even if you have um a travel humidor like this that I keep, um uh -huh. I just use a cap full okay. in the reservoir. That's uh -huh. it. And I keep a Bavita pack in there. I and yep. I keep my tools in there. And you never have to worry about that. But I in always inspect my cigars. I look at them. I rotate them. I may move them from the cooler top by the fan, may bring them down because the ones by the fan might be getting the most air and that might make them softer because of where they are. The ones in cellophane is more protected because they're already encased in a protective um, shield, as mm -hmm. I like to say. But if you have unwrapped cigars, those are the ones you have to watch more carefully because uh -huh. if you have a, a big change in temperature and humidity, that can ruin that cigar because it's not protected from the elements. It's not protected from the change that is being subjected to. So you have to keep that in mind when you want to create your, you know, temporary humidor, like in the Tupperware or whatnot. You know, if you have it in the wrapper, Keep it in the cellophane. There's no reason to take it off until you're ready to, to smoke it, to cut and light it. It also protects the integrity of the cigar. So by all mm -hmm. means, just leave it there and, you know, just watch the gauge. You just watch it and keep an eye on it. Good question. Thank you. I appreciate this, that. Yeah, this was, this was really informative, uh, Toya. I really... I didn't even have no questions. There. I'm just listening. Just, <laughs> I'm really asking a lot because y'all know I'm new yeah. to this. So I, I yeah. do just been taking notes and listening. Y'all, listen. I learned a lot tonight. This. Yeah, she did oh, a good job. Good. Yeah, she hats did a good off job. to her. Trisha put I, in I mean, her college. I, I can't wait for hers. I'm telling you, she might go next. We're going to swap this. Okay. <laughs> Those are wonderful ladies. No, I'm nervous. Don't worry. <laughs> I mean, like I say, um, you know, in all seriousness, I, I truly love cigars. I, I wish I had started earlier, but everything mm -hmm. comes in due time. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it, I, I just want to show my passion for cigars. I don't just want to take great pictures and, oh, yeah, that picture looks nice. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to have a conversation with anyone 
anywhere in the world about um, a, a cigar and mm-hmm. having the knowledge of what am I smoking? Where did this come from? How did it get from, you know, a seed in the ground to a nice banded cigar? Like, I want to know, but that's just how I am. I'm just a curious person by nature. I'm always reading and learning and trying to, you know, get more information about cigars to share with you when it's my turn. And then also just some basic conversation and educating those that are curious. And that's why we have this podcast, you know, to don't, feel intimidated because there's things you don't know we're all still yeah. learning and yeah still and learning. one thing and one thing about being black women i don't know if it's anybody white in here but if it is y'all too um <laughs> yeah uh but we do we get tested a lot <laughs> yeah y'all gotta excuse me i don't drunk almost a half a bottle of boom farm sangria right now so yeah <laughs> Oh, no. oh, yeah, bitch. I don't went old school. I don't went old school. It was three ninety nine. We had to get that. So, but like, uh, but for real though, like we do, we do have to be. We have to be. We have to be up on our um up on our whole thing about these cigars because trust me these people in these lounges is gonna ask you they're gonna look at you and they want to know what you know right Mm -hmm. so i'm telling they will look at you they think you coming in there for one thing because they try me all the time they always think i'm coming there for black and mouth i don't know why but you know but I do. I bust a bubble every time and I teach them a yeah. little something. So it feel good, especially when you know your shit. I don't want right. to so right. it definitely works. Because you, have, you have to be more than a pretty face. And unfortunately, we are judged as women and not only as women, but women of color because we're smoking cigars and oh, Tamara, can't in there you just to look cute. You know, we're in there because we truly enjoy what we're involved in. And then, you know, we know what's going on. So, and you know, Absolutely. before we wrap up, because it's now 8.01 and we don't want to overstay our welcome. I don't want to no, overstay it's... my welcome because I want to get invited back. Oh, it... Mm-hmm. It's 701 over here. Well, boss man has popped in. What's up, Seth? Awesome. Hi, boss. Hey, hey. Uh oh, Seth. Uh-oh. Come in here like that. Yeah, that old. He got that old Obama phone. That's that Obama phone. You have to get that right. That's that Obama phone. Oh, you outside. Oh, Lord. Uh, that old Obama phone to get you every time. <laughs> and man, oh, you. <laughs> that black man died from it. That man get breast cancer. Oh, oh my goodness. Well, oh, thank you, Toya. I really enjoyed yes. it. Yes, thank you, thank you. Yes, yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime. Thank you. Don't, Anytime. Don't forget to subscribe to the Stickman Podcast, ladies. We would appreciate it. The link is uh, in the chat. <laughs> Go get y'all some fat ass gear. Go get y'all some fat ass gear now. Fat ass. All right, there you go. You got, you got me now. Yeah, we got, yeah, we got, you, got you now. We got okay. You. Yay. Okay. Yeah. I had, to, I had to come in. I had to come inside to get on the Wi-Fi. That's yeah, no, nah, that's that's <laughs> that Obama phone. <laughs> oh, I cover, yeah. Hey, well, yeah. uh, just, I just want to take a couple. Tamara. I just want to take a couple. Who, 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 Lindsay, cause somebody, somebody need to flip their phone. Tamara Lindsay. I need somewhere to go. Look, look. Need to go. Yeah, can she please mute her? Um... Dead body. Dead body. Tamara. Hey, hey, Reggie, mute her. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, first of all, I just want to say thank you for everyone who participated on the call tonight. Uh, your name will be entered into a drawing for uh, some fat ass gear. And I, I never did introduce myself. I'm Cedric Dunson, AK Cedric said. Mr. Oh, there we go with the, the bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, again, uh, a big congratulations, a big hoopla. A big you did the thing to Miss Toya. Uh, from the part that I heard at the end was outstanding, and I also want to say thank you for all those who contributed and who added because it was some great information, and I really appreciate y'all for showing up. Appreciate you sharing, and Miss Toya, thank you for an awesome job. Uh, Yay, if you Toya. have any questions, yes. any questions, any recommendations, or other topics you'd like to discuss, uh, 
just uh, hit me in the inbox, call me, FaceTime, and do whatever. I don't care. I don't care what you call me. Just call, and uh, mm. and just let me know if you have any other uh, recommendations of different topics that you would like to discuss. We have some awesome uh, admins of the group that uh, take the time to prepare for these calls uh, to make sure that y'all get very good information. So I would like. Um, to make sure that we're talking about and discussing topics that you want to discuss. Right. And as always, I would love to see you in some Fat Ash gear. So make sure you check out the website, www.fatashcollection.com. I would love to see you in some Fat Ash gear. And also the PA. And say he got bills to pay. Trying to grow this brand. I wanted to be uh, huh. all over. Well, huh? We're trying to do wow. something. This is the Fat Ash hey. movie. We hey, ready to go do worldwide. It. That's what do we're going to do. And we also got the PA Cigar Online. If you haven't uh, tried it, if you haven't ordered, please go out and get it. I think it's something that is for all palates. Yeah, uh, it is. We talked yeah. a little bit about, yeah, so I think it's something, no matter if you're medium, full, full, mild, infused, it doesn't yep. matter what your palate is. I do think you really enjoy the stick. Yeah, absolutely. Please don't, sit, and please don't forget yeah. to subscribe. That's right. <laughs> and don't forget to subscribe subscribe to the stick man podcast so that you can stay on top of not only um uh sotl calls but other valuable information videos other podcasts that he has out there i mean he has some great great uh content out there for you so make sure you subscribe to the stick man podcast all right ladies y'all wrap it up I didn't Good night, all, go back outside. I all right outside. I finish, my, finish my work do your Thank thing. You, <laughs> Have a good All night. right, y'all. Good night. Good night. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.